The planet is a battleground. Ancient people and beliefs crash head-on into a new age of science and commerce. In North America, what will become a land of cities and highways lies under a blanket of forest. Now, pioneers push into the unknown. New England, 1676. Two generations after the Mayflower, 150,000 settlers cling to the edge of a vast wilderness. Among them, the Lewis family, Puritans from England. They've been here 30 years. The Wabanaki have been here 12,000. In the 17th century, there are around 55 million hunter-gatherers living across almost one-third of the planet. A way of life dating back to the dawn of mankind, now under threat as newcomers move onto their lands. In the New World, Native Americans outnumber settlers by nearly six to one. It's war. Wabanaki kill nine of the Lewis family. But some of the children survive, including a three-year-old girl, Mercy Lewis. Sixteen years later, a witness in a trial that marks the passing of an era. In 1692, Salem, Massachusetts, a community in Melton. 65-year-old Martha Corey devout Christian and churchgoer, on trial for her life. And the Puritans of that time were, you know, lived on the lip of, of the wilderness. They're terrified of the wilderness, of wildness, of the wild men, of the Indians. So that kind of fear allows for a witch trial to kind of take hold and a hysteria to take over. Mercy Lewis and nine other women and girls claim Corey is a witch, haunting their dreams, hurting them without touching them. Mercy testifies. I believe in my heart that Martha Corey is a most dreadful witch, biting, pinching, and choking me. All considered evidence of witchcraft. The people of Salem are Puritans. They live by the Bible. In fear of the devil, blaming him for famine, disease, and conflict. The fascinating thing about the Salem witch trials is they occur at a crucial tipping point in the history of America. Supernatural explanations are first and foremost in their mind. They see the devil allied with the Indians. So if you could imagine sitting in your little living room with your tiny tallow candle and your Indian windows cracked a little bit for the breeze, every snap of a branch you hear, every rustle of a leaf you hear is either the devil or the Indians. This is their nightly experience. For 300 years, the West has been gripped by a witch-hunting frenzy. Forty-five thousand put to death. Eighty percent women. 
the Puritans take their belief in witchcraft to the new world. Five people in Salem have already been accused. Now it's Martha Corey's word against her teenage accusers. I have often seen the apparition of Martha Corey, and she had very often afflicted me by her acts of witchcraft. Martha Corey, tell me why you hurt these persons. Martha's only hope so you're in agony. Was the devil taking possession? Is that the judge will see through the girl's hysteria. The devil coming to roost. There are ten people in here. We'll swear to your possession. Yes! I know nothing about this. I am a gospel woman. I am a gospel woman. You are a gospel witch! In Salem, over 100 people are accused of witchcraft. Among them, a four-year-old girl. 20 executions. 14 years later, one teenager withdraws her testimony, claiming to have been deceived by Satan. Mercy Lewis never speaks of it again. Salem is among the last of the mass witch hunts. The era of fear and superstition is ending. 